Today, I'm going to talk about ego work. First, I'll explain what the ego is, then we'll talk about what ego work is, and then finally, how to get started. So first of all, we all have an ego. Well, what is an ego? An ego is a part of our self-identity that's been internalized based on our very real lived experiences beginning in childhood. So really simply, it's this identity that we create based on all of the different meanings that we've assigned to all of the different events that we've experienced. So for example, say when we were a kid, we found something that really lit us up, that we loved, that we were super interested in, that we were super excited about. Maybe it was art, maybe it was moving our body in a certain way or dancing. And maybe for instance, we were in the presence of an adult who might've said something like, oh, calm down, don't be so dramatic, stop moving around in that way. Understandably, we probably felt hurt. And at the same time, we probably felt like our interest, our curiosity, our excitement is something to be ashamed of or to be repressed, to be hidden, to be held inside. So what do we do? Because we're so incredibly adaptive, we immediately begin to learn that that behavior isn't rewarded. It doesn't get us the feelings of connection, of belonging that we want and that we need. So over time, we adapt. We begin to show less and less of that interest, of that excitement, of that emotion, of that self-expression, we withhold ourselves in some way in order to avoid being hurt. Now, of course, the opposite can happen as well. Say, for instance, we have a parent who values something about us. Maybe it's our athletic ability, our academic ability, but maybe we're really not that into the thing that they value. We're not into sports. We're not into whatever is important to them. But at the same time, we know that our parent gives us attention, gives us validation, might even give us affection when we're doing the thing that they want us to do. So naturally, we end up putting more effort into that thing, even though it doesn't light us up. We don't care about it. It's not our interest. This was so much a part of my own journey. I saw so early on in my family, with my mom in particular, who was generally really emotionally shut down, except when I was achieving whether it was academically or athletically. So to see and to have that presence of my mom that I desperately wanted when I was achieving over time, what did I do? I kept achieving in the ways that made her proud, that allowed her to validate me, and that allowed us to have those connected moments. Even if over time I came to realize that the things that my mom was interested in and valued weren't really the things that I valued myself, yet I kept pushing myself to achieve. Why? Because I, like all of you listening, we will continue to adapt. We will continue to develop and create this ego identity over time as a way of protecting ourselves. because we don't want to go back and feel that same hurt. So we keep all of those aspects of ourselves suppressed. We keep living as this assumed identity so that we can keep ourselves protected. So what ego work really is, is the practice of separating ourselves from our ego. So we can consciously witness all of the habitual reactive patterns that our ego typically drives us into so that we can begin to create space for more authentically aligned choices. So here are the steps to begin ego work. The first step, you want to name your ego. By giving our ego a name, we're already beginning that practice of separating from our ego so that we can begin to not only witness, but to understand our conditioned reactions and all of those habitual behaviors that we've grown to know as us or as our identity. This will create, the separation will create the possibility or the opportunity for us to create new responses. The second step, once we give our ego a name, we want to begin to witness the different, often repeated stories that our ego tells us. Now, of course, they're going to be different for each of us, though really commonly at our core, so many of us struggle or have a deep ego belief that we're not enough or that we're not worthy or that some aspects of our self-expression make us not enough or make us not worthy. By beginning to separate and view that story or witnessing that story, we can see then all of the chain reactions that happens if and when we believe the story as we have for so long, which brings us to that third step. We want to witness consciously then what happens, what reactions we have when we believe our ego story to be true. So when I believe whatever story my ego is telling me, how is it that I react? 
Many of us start to compare ourselves immediately to other people, or maybe we become really critical, perfectionistic about ourselves, intolerant of imperfection. Maybe we engage in a negative self-soothing pattern, something that's not really adaptive, like overeating, overexercising, using substances, maybe shopping too much to numb the pain, overspending, just witnessing this pattern without judgment will shift us from being the reaction itself to being the observer of the reaction itself. So now we know we have an ego with this created assumed identity. We can give them a name to separate ourselves. We can begin to view the story in our mind that our ego is telling us that then leads us right in to this chain of habitual reactions, bringing us to the fourth step and most empowering step in my opinion of ego work, which is releasing the story. Noticing that when we release the story, we give ourselves an opportunity to make a new choice. If we release that we're not good enough or that we're not worthy enough in this way, might I be able to show up for the support that I really need? Might I be able to express myself in the way that I really want to? Might I be able to make a choice to speak and act from a more authentic place, it might be really helpful for some of you to write these prompts down for the future. They are, my ego's name is blank. My ego is telling me the story that blank. When I believe this story, I react by blank. And finally, when I release this story, I can make a choice to blank. Now remember, Ego work, shifting our relationship with our ego is not going to happen overnight. We've all had an ego and an identity that we've been strengthening for years, decades, maybe even our lifetime. When we begin the practice of ego work, of separating and observing these habitual patterns, we give ourselves the opportunity to finally, sometimes for the first time in our life, begin to make choices that are more authentically driven based on who we actually are.